Walls have been around as long as civilization has existed. Retaining walls are used to support earth. They create a vertical change in elevation from the top of the wall to the bottom of the wall. They allow for usable space at the top of the wall, the bottom of the wall, or both. Engineers designed these walls to support the retained soil and any other loads from things that might be on top of the wall. When they work, they work really, really well. When they don't, well, bad things can happen. The four most common ways that retaining walls can fail are in sliding, overturning, bearing capacity, and global stability. Using a small visualization tool we affectionately call wall in a box, we're gonna show you what these different failure modes actually look like. In sliding, a wedge of soil forms behind the wall and it pushes the wall out of the way. As you can see in this clip, the wall stays upright, but it slides horizontally. And you can see that the ground's actually collapsing behind the wall. As engineers, we use earth pressure theory to calculate the loads from this soil mass that are gonna act on the wall. And the idea is we wanna design the wall to be big enough and strong enough to keep it from sliding and hold all this soil in place. Overturning is similar to sliding. The same thing, we get a wedge of soil that's gonna form behind the wall. In the case of overturning, this wedge of soil actually tips the wall over as it's pushing it out of the way. So as engineers, what we do is we actually use some of the concepts that we learned, you know, back in our freshman year of college when we were studying statics of materials. We calculate an overturning moment, which is just kind of a fancy word for the twist that wants to tip the wall over. We can also calculate the resisting moment that comes from the weight of the wall that wants to keep it upright. And we want to make sure that the wall is big enough that it resists this tipping over. In a bearing capacity failure, the soil underneath the retaining wall isn't strong enough to support the wall. You can kind of think about this type of failure by thinking about walking across some really soft clay and you sink in. Or, you know, maybe you're like me, you live in northern Michigan, we've got a lot of sand dunes. You're walking along the edge of a sand dune and every step you take, your foot kind of slides down. Really, in both these cases, what's happening is the soil just simply isn't strong enough to support your weight. So we can have the same thing happen with a retaining wall. Essentially, the wall will overload the supporting soil. You get a wedge material, you know, that kind of fails underneath the wall itself. This wedge moves, it sort of displaces the soil on each side uh, of the wall. Um, often the wall not only will settle some, but it's gonna to continue to fail in either sliding or overturn. So as engineers, what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we design our wall so that the bottom of it is on a foundation that's big enough that we can adequately take all the loads from the wall and the stuff we're trying to support. We wanna make sure we spread out that weight enough that the soils underneath can safely support. You might have heard engineers talk about global stability or overall stability or a global failure. What they're referring to is a failure that occurs behind and below the wall. It actually is a failure that occurs in the slope itself. You know, even in many cases, the wall might be perfectly fine, but the overall or the larger slope isn't stable enough and a big failure occurs and it kind of takes the wall along for a ride. One type of global failure, we call it a rotational failure. You can actually see it here. There's a curved failure surface that forms behind and below the wall and the mass of material uh, rotates as it moves. We can actually run some tests and we can determine how strong a soil is. We can determine how well it holds together. We use this information and we've got some computer programs that we can run and we can actually run a bunch of calculations and determine the stability of our slope and we can make sure that our wall is going to be fine. And actually, if it turns out that the slope isn't stable, there's some extra design and construction techniques that we can do. We can stabilize the slope and then we can safely build a wall. To learn more about retaining wall design and how to avoid these common failure modes, download a copy of the Precast Modular Block Design Mad Goal.